okay so we are uh, conducting one workshop and uh, we are performing all the activity whatever activity we uh, completed at the time of a training okay first uh, we we'll go with this uh, 14th workshop uh, first thing that create a template project okay that is first activity while performing this pmid then explore the user interface okay that also we completed at the time of a training okay okay then we have a create a new item type okay so we can create a custom item types okay in a bmid then create a custom properties okay we have a different different properties persistent property runtime property uh, compound property then uh, runtime property is there we have a table property name value property is there okay so what are the property it is available in this workshop that we are going to finish it up then we have a display custom property in the client user interface okay that is the part of a style sheet custom uh, style sheet interface okay then in sixth workshop we have a create list of lovs okay lov okay then add a naming rule okay naming rule for a particular custom business object okay then form form is also one type of a business object how to create a form okay add relationship rules okay we have a different different relationship rules grm relations rule uh, grm relationship rule is there okay that we are going to conduct here then a deep copy rule is there okay then uh, business object display rule is there okay that we are going to finish it up then predefined extension rule okay here they explain but uh, we'll see uh, if possible we'll complete it okay then add compound property and save your data model changes and deploy it okay so this save your data model changes okay this workshop i'll conduct after two uh, after this one also okay two three times we'll save and deploy it okay good so for the deployment we'll take a break and finish it up okay so basically if you see in this workshop uh, document okay so what are the bmid workshop okay well, that is activity we are performing it here okay so prerequisites for the bmid workshop so what is the prerequisites for the bmid workshop that you required a bmid tool okay so these are the three prerequisites bmid tool is there then test the team center server to which you can deploy the custom data model okay it means you must have a team center environment to deploy your data model okay is it audible you guys clear and proper yes, yes. reach client to connect the test server okay uh, reach client is required to test what was the activity we've deployed and to test it on a reach client only so this is the three prerequisites and then we'll start with the workshop points okay so first we'll check with the prerequisites okay so this is my whole environment machine ready with the all the things okay so team center is here but bmid icon is not available in desktop okay so one second i'll pause okay so as per the prerequisites we required a bmid okay bmid tool everything is installed in this machine okay we, this machine is ready with the environment we have a team center okay let me first test with these things okay whether it is working or not so before going to this i'll add bmid shortcut on my desktop because it requires okay send to desktop okay so desktop shortcut is gets created we had not used anything here so i'll first log in with the team center let me see whether it is working or not okay log in with this input db user only okay i think this team center environment is ready okay we have a team center environment now we'll check with the bmid okay i'm going to close this one we not require these things because it's a uh, not dependent uh, uh, we not require this team center 
PMID is uh, independently work. Okay, it's an independent tool. I'm going to close this one. We are going to test it only. Now we'll check BMID. Double click on this BMID icon, it will open. BMID is independent tool only, guys. Okay, you can install anywhere on any machine. Okay, you need to generate a package only deploy on a team center environment but we have this environment where we install all these things including our reach client including our server including our database okay everything we installed on the same machine so is it possible to deploy both the deployments okay we have a two types of deployments okay one hot deployment and second one is a core deployment okay so hot deployment is also possible if you have a team center server is on the same machine and data model installation is on the same machine so is, is, is it possible to deploy a hot deployment also because we, we are connecting a bmid directly to the team center server okay now when you are launching any ide okay so this is also one type of ide integrated development environment it will first ask you for a workspace so workspace is nothing but the whatever the activity you performed okay that we are going to save it on this workspace only okay so every time when you are going to any ide tool okay it's not for a bm id any ide tool you need to uh, set a workspace to store your configured data correct so here when you are going to open this bmid first time then it will ask you for a workspace okay so you can use this default workspace or you can give a new path for this workspace also okay i'm going to set it as a default only okay so see program file siemens we have a bmid folder is there i think this workspace folder will not be there right now let us see at this part is it there or not you see it drive program files siemens we have a team center bmid okay earlier it is there actually i think it was i, I was open this but you can delete i am going to delete it guys okay we not required let me check whether any project is generated or not Okay, at the time of a testing last time i think i opened this here but not required i'm going to delete it fine okay i think bmid is open that's why it's not about, not going to delete it okay so it will create a new uh, workspace folder if i click on ok then it will create it okay you can see it here directly it will create some files it will get created in that workspace folder okay that is the dependent file for your new projects okay new projects and all that okay so let me open this bmid So this is the basic thing uh, you need to do workspace so what are the packages you are generating after configuring this bmid okay that will get stored in the that workspace folder only okay with the exact path okay what are the path is there okay now this is the fresh nothing is there right now okay if you see nothing is there we 
yet not created any projects okay we have not configured anything okay so directly it will open with the help guys it will open with the help okay so every tool the help is there okay not for a bm id if you see any visual studio or any other id tools okay if you have any clips platform then help is there okay you can uh, use this help option and uh, read all these things so whatever the software compatibility is there okay what are the features available for this software that will be there in this help only okay so contents also they provided okay you can uh, explore content wise okay so this is the things you can configure by using this bm id okay but uh, basically we are going to uh, configure this bm id as per the workshop only okay we not required help right now so i'm going to close it okay this one is also assistant is also not required okay but if you are new for this bm id then you can explore these things at least once okay so everything is there update of a batch of we okay edit in the live data deploy addition definition all these things is there okay explore once okay don't trust anyone explore from your end okay and uh, make a note for this one so that is in a beneficial for you because uh, suppose someone telling you the wrong things then don't trust on these things actually you can correct it from uh, read these things and try once okay this is very important actually help and bmid assistance okay, i'm going to close it okay so basically you have a standard view and advanced view okay so if you see standard and advanced after creation of a project only you'll get a good idea of the standard view and advanced view okay so before currently currently we don't have any project you can move this to the standard views and advanced view okay i'm going to explain you each and everything every point after creation of a project only okay so you can basically we are working with the advanced view only okay so i'm clicking on this advanced now we'll actual start this workshop activity okay so so now first thing we are going to start with the created template project okay so any activity when you are performing in a bmid you require one project okay in that project you are creating a prop uh, item types properties lovs rules and all that okay so before are going to create all these things you require a one template project okay how to create a bmid template project they given it here okay bmid file new project okay file new project is there in bmid you have a new business modeler id project template is there okay this option you need to select after that you will get a you will pop up this window okay so in this window you must need to fill all the mandatory properties okay let us try in our machine first okay so here we have a file new project is there correct so in here you will have a different different uh projects you can create okay if you have you want to create a java project you can create it from here java double e java scripts is there okay then cc plus plus project also you can create it here but we are basically focusing on the bmid okay so i'm selecting this bmid here we have a bmid template project is there i'm selecting this one next correct okay so you'll get a one pop-up window for this one correct so here you need to fill a, a data for this particular project okay so prefix template name template display name and template description okay so prefix is very important okay so prefix when you are adding a prefix okay the entry prefix must be have a length between two and a four character okay it's accepting only two and four characters okay so characters they required okay so basically in workshop we have uh, this one okay same things we are configuring here we have a prefix a5 underscore okay a5 underscore template name we are giving a5 workshop and template display name we are providing a workshop okay 
then description and all that as per you description you can fill it here okay so we will try it here directly so we have a prefix a5 is there i'm popping it from here control c try to paste it here fine okay so there is no error right now for a prefix okay so you can use the same things template name you can put it as the a5 workshop okay okay so template display name we'll keep it as a workshop only description you put it anything you want created for bmid workshop okay now there is no any error right now finish we'll highlight it here and as per the document everything is set correct so there is any dependent dependent template directory is there then it will be available here only okay dependent template but currently we don't have any dependent templates and all that okay so you can see here dependent template in the sense that if you have any other features okay for example if you have any uh, CAD integration uh, tool is there okay so there also there is a one package dependent template package is there if you have any other uh, other tool you are integrated with the team center then their business object package their configuration package also they give one with the installables okay that you need to deploy it at the same time feature you need to enable it here okay so that template must be in the exact location then only it gets deployed with this existing projects okay so existing projects also having a some dependency okay so basically what happened so i'll come up with again brief activity because it's very important bmid team center is basically work with the foundation project okay there is one foundation project we are deploying at the time of installation after that we are extending that foundation template by creating a new project okay new template okay so here if you see dependent template directory i'm going to browse it okay not required sorry okay so he, at this location if you see it here templates okay here you'll get a dependent templates okay so here the template is available foundation dependent template is a foundation template is there okay so basically same thing is there we have a classification template is there see that is a dependent template only foundation it is having a big size if you see it's a 20 more than 27 mb okay so total team center environment is uh, configured by using this team center foundation foundation underscore template okay this is a dependent template okay if i delete this template from here dependent template then at the time of uh, deployment you will get the error okay so this is the things okay when you are adding one extra feature okay in team center then again the template is gets created at the same location only guys so this is the thing okay today i'm going to explain you in brief only okay we are considering that we are working with an one customer okay with this environment and we are configuring and we are deploying the package first time okay as per their first requirement okay so this is the path where at the time of installation workspace installation and all that it gets created bmid installation here okay so i'm going to close it so here all the 
dependent template directory you must need to record okay red star indicates all these are the mandatory properties okay so use this default location for a, a workspace okay so basically if you see a5 workshop okay at this location let us see whether this is available or not bmid workspace okay so currently there is no any project and all that okay bmid uh yeah bmid 11 okay workshop now i'm if i'm going to click on next okay so it's asking for the dependent templates okay if you required then you can pull up this dependent okay so classification interface okay i'll i'll pull up all these things not an issue okay because the templates is already there that's why it is available here only okay if you see in back in this template project template folder okay this templates is there that's why it is visible here only okay i'm going to select next okay language is also we required some language we required okay so if you see all other languages there okay most of the time we are going with the english only in india but uh, other customers they are not using english guys okay so they are using as per their language only okay but i'm selecting here english only next okay so namespace and all that okay code generation information it's a part of a customization we are skipping at this thing okay next step. compiler it's asking for a compiler home it's asking for a team center installation directory okay if you have any compiler okay so compiler in the sense if you have any id backend id is there for example visual studio is there okay eclipse is there okay then you can use this as a compiler home for this one okay so you can build the code in bmid okay you can compile it by using that particular software okay currently we don't have any compiler so i'm going to skip it and we are not focusing on the customization activity right now okay now i'm going to select next it's asking for it's related to the client building information okay it's related to customization only okay but you need to know what activity we can is it possible by using this bm idea also okay so it automatically check up all these things cc plus plus okay okay I'm going to finish it up okay so now let's see the project is starting to create a project once it's starting to create a project okay you can see it here the workshop folder is gets created correct it's still in progress only we will wait for some time it's loading okay and for team center environment okay when you are working with a live okay don't make any mistake at the time of project creation okay because when you made any mistake okay then it'll be difficult later on after configuring this pmid and all that okay again you need to create a same activity okay so this video will help you out when you are deploying with any client location and all that okay to do this activity because bmid it's a standalone tool for deployment yet not we go with the cloud activity okay so for a bmid configuration all that you must need to use a standalone system for configuration of this uh, bmid data model and all that okay we have not explore uh, extended this to the cloud activity because currently rich client no more they people are using actually most of the client rich client they are not using they are moving at ahead with the active workspace with the cloud technology okay but uh, for configuration things you must need to use a standalone machines only correct now it gets created here okay so i'm not going to explain each and every point now okay because it will take a lot of time okay so let's see here 
project is gets created okay in output directory vnex64 packaging there is no package after configuration and generate and create package only that time packages gets created i am not going to explain you the views of this standard and advanced view okay standard it means it's for understanding purpose only okay standard view and in, because in standard view if you see here project files okay whatever the projects files is there these all the files it is available here in this location same structure is gets created here yes let's see correct workshop extension icon install output and all these things is there same thing is there okay this is all the standard means it's for overview advanced means if you want to explore more related to the class related to the extensions related to the outline console and all that you must need to use the advanced only correct now come up with the this file workshop okay this is actually 71 page file okay let's see we'll try to complete it but we'll complete it today only not an issue okay you let it gets completed explore the user interface now first workshop is gets completed it's a, for a creation of project only correct guys if you have any doubt you can ask me now okay i'm going to pause this if you have any doubt pause this recording clear okay so workshop to explore the user interface okay so explore the user interface it means you have a two views first one is the standard perspective and another one is the advanced perspective okay in standard perspective if you see they also given the same thing here okay you will have a information about project files where it gets located and all that okay what file dependency is there okay uh, extension file you will get a default file default.xml master.xml and model.xml things is there okay console things is there okay now this is the to see the project properties right click on a workshop pro project okay and choose the properties this is important project properties here we'll get the things okay what we require and all that okay if you suppose for example if you deploy on any particular client location and they already created all these things guys the mri projects is exist there okay everything is there okay how do you know where it gets located and how they installed okay what is the dependent templates is there in that project okay so for that you must need to know how to see the properties so if you see if you right click on this one and properties is there okay one second i think you can see properties from here also project property is there option i think one second where it is yes in standard view we'll have properties now we'll get it here okay all these things okay location where it get installed see at this location it gets installed if already that project is get created everything is set up is there okay so how to find out where it is installed and all that it's a bit difficult sometimes if you don't know how to find out so that's why resource and all that is there okay so in team center if you see on this bmid tool then you will get a geo id is there okay this is the graphical user interface id it will reflect this in a configuration.xml file okay so what exactly the configuration you provided at the time of bmid creation prefix it's a5 underscore template name display name it's a workshop template name is the a5 workshop okay so we did this okay but you need to know all these things later on because uh, most of the time you will not get an opportunity to create the projects okay 
whatever the existing project you need to work on that existing projects only so in bmid a standard view right click on this bmid project and properties you will get a uh, this information correct this is also very important okay dependent templates and all that you will get it here okay fine i'm going to close this so this one they explore in this workshop second okay anything important again they explore we'll see all these things is there basically what they created here they don't have any dependent template we have a classification and we have a translation template is there okay so how to add a profile okay for hot deployment server profile creation activity is there okay server connection profile we call it as a server profile creation activity so where you will get these things okay so you will get these things in windows preferences team center and server connection profile okay if you see here again i'll uh, skip here in the advanced view in windows preferences here you will have a team center is there okay and server connection profile is there okay here you need to set this connection to deploy a hot deployment okay already i set at the time of a bmid installation at the time of installation also you can set these things okay if i need to check okay how to need to create or if i click on this modify then you will get it through this port number 1572 we are going to connect a team center environment okay so for this tc data server we created and it gets connected with the protocol iiop we have a four protocol okay so as per the client protocols client install protocol we are using these configurations okay now i'm going to cancel it if it is not available if it is not there then how to create it that is the question okay you can add it and do the same activity here okay but most probably for a hot deployment 1571 okay 1572 i think yeah 1572 is support number we are using for a hot deployment connection correct it is clear all of you guys so basically this is for testing purpose only guys okay basically for a cold deployment it's no more uh, will be useful okay we are not using these things but for a testing purpose hot deployment they are using okay i have not used any hot deployment on any client location guys okay so don't worry about this hot deployment okay but in your machine if you want an immediate result then you can this use this hot deployment okay most probably the customer is looking for the cold deployment only okay so today also we are prepared for a cold deployment correct so this is what for a workshop second okay related to the explore the user interface all the given okay now again coming back this is also important guys okay help contents okay help contents here you will get a good idea okay help contents. how to view this help contents and explore okay it's not a one two days activity actually uh, to explore all these things you will take a two three months okay to read all these things and understand all these things but at least once you read all these things that is my suggestion at least once okay don't read other things actually for bmid related you have only one chapter here okay bmid you'll get all these things okay what are the feasibility of this software they provided okay instead of this you don't need to do any activity on a client level also if you want to take a master on this bmid then you will have a hundred percent knowledge of all these uh, contents okay related to this bmid okay if it is done from your end then you are good enough to configure this bmid data model okay guys so now workshop second actually it's for exploring the environment okay again i think i don't need to uh, show you how to open this help and all that okay till again i'm going to tell you help you will have a search is there okay search option is there then contents it is gets visible here you will get the chapter related to the bmid correct configure your bmid data model this one we required okay once install the bmid at least all these topics we'll go through all these topics okay in single 
once okay it's very interesting hey guys actually okay fine i'm going to close this one i'm not going to waste more time on this explore activity okay you can explore from your end also okay so before going to do any activity i created a project but i had not saved i'm going to save these things okay fine now moving ahead with the third workshop okay create a new item type actually we are going to start with these things let's see so now Sorry. yes okay now moving to the third workshop till it is clear okay two workshop we completed okay try to explore it okay if we do this simultaneously then it will take a time okay so i think you guys will agree on this one okay simultaneous activity it will take a time so once it gets completed you can try from your end okay if you are facing any issue then contact to me will fix your issue now create a new item type so performing this workshop to create a custom item business object to represent the new type of objects okay the business object are the fundamentals object used to the data model okay this is the define the definition of this uh, business object so you can create a business object to the to represent the products parts okay product parts document change processes okay any custom uh, configuration and so on all these things you can represent by using the business objects okay this is the basic things only and basically we have a item business object is there item is the most common business object under this which a children are created so it is used to represent the product parts okay so item is the most common business object under which children are created okay what are the custom object types we are creating we are creating under the items okay so how to create these things okay earlier we created a design parts or engineering parts at the time of a training but here as per this document we will follow up all these things okay so at the end we will get a same result only we are going to check these things okay the configuration and all that okay so how to create create a new item to represent a part okay so instead of this item i want to create a new custom with this object so they given it here <laughs> Okay. BMID new model element model element type wizard and display so they are not given a briefly okay but what they did it here they created one object under the item parent is item only will also get this UI but name of the item they given a a5 workshop part as specified the display name as a workshop part finish it but they created note also they given you could add a custom property in the dialog box but instead of you add them a letter on the property step new business object property is there okay so basically in our language i'll explain you they created on custom business object with the name of workshop part guys okay so real name of this business object a5 underscore workshop part a5 underscore it's a prefix only okay so we'll try to create it under the item only okay so we have this bmid we have i'm not going to explain you all these things bmid related form object runtime object okay we we'll directly come up with item okay item is there inside that item i'll right click on this one and new object creation is there simple one okay so by default a5 will become here okay so we are using the same thing I'm copying this actually because to type it will take a time. 
a5 part display name is automatically replicated no need to modify it okay display name workshop part is automatically get reflected team center component is there okay a5 workshop okay same ui is here also okay okay team center component actually it's a team center 10 version only okay bmi did 10 only inside the bmi did 10 component was not there okay it's a 11 only it's a 11 environment so component they added by default it get automatically fill all these things okay 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 so workshop part we are creating so when i click on this next okay this is for item information if i click it on a next then you'll get an item revision information by default it will come up okay so what are the mandatory properties there you need to fill it up okay so by default it gets filled then if you click okay if you click on this finish okay thing is that okay you can is it possible to add a properties at the same time also guys okay if i click on the back this also you must need to know okay you can add properties from here from here also okay but instead of doing this okay you can add it after creation of the object okay so i'm going to finish it up once it gets created it gets created under the item okay you will get it this custom c indicates that on down bottom it's a custom object only okay i'm going to save it this is what only they created okay you can create okay you can relate these things okay this is the workshop they created only one thing they have a workshop part only after that they finish it up okay and deploy the changes on the reach client actually okay the menu and they deployed this on a hot deployment okay so instead of this deployment after creation of the properties we'll try this deployment after creation of properties okay if we wait for this deployment only one object they created and they tested it with the team center environment okay so i'm going to skip this part okay after property we'll try but they deploy it hot deployment only okay hot deployment will not require okay we'll do with the cold deployment okay so basically when you are working with the client location hot deployment you guys know more we are using okay so you must need a good understanding of a cold, de cold deployment so cold deployment they're not explaining this workshop okay as compared to the hot deployment cold deployment is uh, difficult okay but uh, probably we are prepared for this cold deployment only okay? okay so this part will skip and verification also will skip okay after deployment verify these things okay whether that particular object gets created or not not okay so workshop 4 create a custom property we'll take it this workshop 4 and after that now in workshop 4 we are adding some properties on this workshop uh, workshop part okay where we are adding we are adding on the item okay and which property we are adding we are adding the persistent property guys okay so they given it here property name also add the following persistent properties with the different different attribute type correct so two properties there now supplier property we need to add it on a item that is workshop part we created i'm sorry i'm going to open it here this particular workshop part correct simultaneously i'm going to open this workshop part revision also now add property it's not a big deal directly start property adding the property which property we required we need to add workshop IV
A5 supplier. A5 supplier. I'm selecting this persistent. Okay, this is the persistent only. A5 supplier. Correct. So it will come up with the display name supplier. Okay, but they require this display name as a supplier. No, yes is the capital only. So I'll change this with the S. Now attribute type. What they choose here? Choose long string. Okay. After deployment, we'll see the real result. Okay. Long string I'm selecting. So once I selecting the long string, all other options get height. Okay. Now what they choose here? Long string. Okay, they are telling that enable it for use actually, but by default it's a true only guys. Okay, we can see in a property constants. Okay, once I created, okay, anything required, show property during save as show this property. Okay, it's fine only. I'm going to select next and I'm going to finish it up. Once created this property on item, you can select this property in property constant enable okay so by default it's a true only okay if you don't want to use this property later on then you can make it as a file okay then this property will no more in use but instead of do these things you have other option also remove this property from a style sheets okay then it will not get reflected on the client okay but if you remove this property on a style sheet then also it will get visible in the property box okay right click if you right click on the business object and view properties there there it will be there okay so to confuse a client uh, clients gets confused user gets confused instead of do this if you don't want to use this you make it as a false okay so by default it gets true only so they explain same things here also i'm not going to do this false okay i already uh, by default it's enabled so i'll keep it enabled only there so we'll create one more property with the a5 supplier code all these properties gets created on the item only correct workshop part only okay so a5 safety code we are creating here adding property so that is also persistent one safety code so i'm not going to explain you uh, the property behavior guys okay property behavior i think you guys already aware about these things correct safety code correct it's an integer only now we are defining an integer this time so data type attribute type so data type only you are selecting okay now fine i'm going to finish it up then two properties gets created a5 safety code a5 supplier now if anything is there again i think they added enable this property for use in the client user interface using a enable property option constant okay why it is required by default at the time of creation it's a true only if you don't want to use then you can make it as a false okay currently we want this to it's a true only okay here also you'll get the true scenario enabling true option is there correct fine now select workshop part revision on a revision also we are going to add some properties that is also a persistent properties is there thing is that only we are changing attribute type okay so here a5 weight we are adding on the revision workshop part revision properties persistent only and on the revision we have a three properties correct a5 weight
if I wait for a display name I'll keep first caps only double data type it's a double only correct finish correct adding one more property with the material code persistent m capital i'll make it as the m capital c capital because it's a display name only and i'll make it as a string only but string they are not defining a string length so material code i'm defining a 32 here i'm going to finish it up correct one more property material description it's a long string only add property all of these are the persistent properties only correct material description M. Yeah, i'll make it as a capital d capital material description this is for a long string okay long string okay done correct material description long term show this property during the creation of the business object that is enabled only for every object or every property sorry okay i'm going to finish it up good so we created five properties on the same object uh, not on the same object on workshop part we created two on workshop part revision we created a three later on what they created here enable it okay so enable it's done only okay we enabled it at the time of the creation we enabled okay so the same thing they repeated here okay deploy the changes on the reach client okay now let's try to deploy it okay so we are using a cold deployment for this one okay so okay i'm going to save this configuration first okay so cold deployment we'll do the cold deployment okay so i'll take 10 15 minutes extra or okay i'll take the 15 minutes only okay so cold deployment we'll start with the cold deployment guys okay for the cold deployment you must need to create a package for this one guys okay so bmid generate software package option is there so here i'm generating the software package for this one in this location i'm going to finish it up once it gets created it gets created in the same location in output directory minix 64 packaging full update package gets created now we'll try to deploy this package okay now i'm going to minimize this bmid minimize this one so how to deploy cold deployment so cold deployment it is fine first time i'll deploy with the cold deployment next time we'll try to uh, deploy it on hot deployment okay to deploy package you must need team center environment manager oh, need to open the team center environment manager environment manager is right click on this environment manager okay and run as administrator okay so location of this team center environment manager open file temp.bat file is there install directory this file we required okay run as administrator yes because deployment will take uh, one hour so at least we'll take break of one hour then we'll try next activity configuration manager i think earlier also we did the same activity i'm not going to explain each point here for deployment okay perform maintenance on existing next so this is the configuration we have currently we don't have this workshop project i'm selecting a next so before going to deploy you must need to add the template i'm selecting a bmid template from here okay 
so here you need to add one template okay whatever you created i'm going to add it you need to browse it from here that template path okay the feature file we have so i think contribution feature this file we required correct so it will go and add it here directly see right open the error let's see okay it gets added workshop a5 workshop part now i'm going to select next and start within a second it will add okay so it added now i want to enable this feature means this feature file so how to enable it need to run the team center environment manager on it again run as administrator next configuration manager perform maintenance on existing okay so here you need to add remove feature select first time you need to select the add remove feature and next time you need to select teams into foundation here workshop i will type a workshop here feature we already added correct it must be enable it here i enabled it select next one or more of the selected feature required that all it's a warning only not an error it's saying that your fsc must be start in this case okay so our fsc i'll check status of the fsc teams into fsc service okay it's a running only correct fine it's asking for the team center administrative user password in fdp select next okay so template gets a database template summary workshop template is there okay now if i going to start then it will start a deployment okay let's start it guys okay it will take more than 45 minutes okay as you know this is hot deployment yeah, sorry this is cold deployment so i'll start it once finish we'll start with the next uh, workshops okay so we'll take a break of uh, one hour so we'll be back on uh, 215 correct is done ramesh okay now we'll see the results okay then we'll start with the uh, workshop 5 with the display custom property in a client user interface it's a part of a style sheet configuration okay so here we need to modify three style sheets oh. okay for that style sheet modification is there we are creating a new style sheet for this uh, workshop part okay so here they give one original style sheets and save as to okay so item style sheet is already available in uh, team center 
data database that we are we are saving as a workshop part with this name only okay you can keep any name but uh, here as per the document and as per their suggestion we'll save as this item to the a5 workshop part okay item division will make it as a we'll save it as a a5 workshop part revision in item summary we'll save as a a5 workshop part summary and base item revision summary one they given a5 workshop part revision summary okay this is for a item revision summary style uh, yeah okay we'll also save it in a new step only and lateron will configure this style sheets okay by adding a custom properties okay what are the properties newly we created that we are going to add it okay so there is a two ways for adding these attributes uh, adding this property you can add in a viewer tabs also instead of this you can download it in local machine and you can modify it and import it again okay so let me open the team center first okay so they given the process and all that here okay so if you want the immediate configuration then you can use the viewer command okay same thing is there uh, in awc they give an xrd editor for the style sheet uh, edit okay in active workspace newly versions okay so this total workshop is for a style sheet configuration okay so later on our results will get displayed here okay so yeah okay so t let will configure it here okay so let us wait for the login team center login This all activity we already performed eh, at the time of training. Same activity we are performing here with a single shot and single one by one, step by steps. Okay. So first we'll check that custom business object this gets created or not this gets configured or not i'll click it on home folder directly once i click here on home folder my team center model will automatically open now from here file new item workshop correct workshop part gets created configured yes safety code is there supplier is there so supplier we have a long string so it will look like the description correct you can add a multiple suppliers so there is no limit restrictions for this one supplier code we have a, will provided i think uh, 
integer integer supplier we provided a long string and safety code we provided an integer correct okay so fine so this is the attribute types so that is gets reflected here once i created suppose for example temporary one temp part i created if i want to finish it thing is that it gets created okay but in summary tab the properties will not get reflected okay so what are the properties there supplier code safety code that property here it is not get reflected so for that you need to create new style sheets okay by taking a reference of existing one okay so for that i am going to search style sheet item style sheet here and i am i'll make it as save as with the a5 workshop part okay you can give any name at the time of a save as so search option is there you need to click it on here so generating cache it will take time that's why it systems very slow only see bm id what will happen every time you will get a 100% result it's not like that okay there is a lot of failure in bm id okay understand the things i'm selecting a general here okay general query so here i'll get a general query so i want a xml rendering style sheet i want to type xml rendering style sheet is there okay so i'm selecting xml rendering style sheets and i'll want to item star okay i'm going to search here so only item xml rendering style sheet will get displayed here okay now which style sheet we required here i need a three style sheet four style sheets okay item item revision item summary and base revision summary okay now i have item i'll click this on item file save as option is there you can make it as a save as okay now give a name with your custom business object name a5 workshop part copy finish so it will save as in a new stuff folder okay again i have a item summary is there item revision is there so i'll select this item revision file save as then i'll provide a name of a workshop part revision finish then i require item summary also i'm selecting item summary file save as a5 workshop part summary okay finish okay then i'll need one more item revision summary okay so item revision summary instead of item base item summary item revision summary is also fine yeah item revision summary is there same like that actually workshop part revision summary item revision summary file save as finish 
I'm going to close this one. This one is also not required. Now let's see in new stuff folder, you will get these things. Correct. Okay. Yes, select this one. And if you open view option viewer you will get you can modify it from here also okay this particular style sheet yet not registered okay you need to register it first okay so i am registering this workshop part for an item okay Okay, workshop part revision. One more you need to download, I think, instead of this workshop part. Okay, so workshop we'll start with the workshop part summary. Okay, workshop part revision. Workshop part summary is there. Okay, workshop part summary. I'm going to register this particular by selecting the object workshop. Workshop part selecting it for a summary and apply. Then I'm selecting workshop part summary, revision summary. workshop part revision and revision summary apply now here in summary tab i want to display the properties okay so here same thing is there but here bit difficult to configure it here Okay, so section first is there. See, this is the section, section to section scene. Okay, separator is there. I'll do one thing. I'll copy this separator, separator. Okay, I'll copy all these things. Okay, Control C, and I'll paste it here again. Control V. But we have only two properties, correct? So I'll remove this one. In summary actually, which property we added? okay separator separator okay apply let's see yeah supplier septical it gets added here now we added three other properties on a item revision summary same thing i'll do this time i'll open a I workshop part revision summary in viewer
okay so here i'll do one thing i'll copy this whole things and i'll add it here okay Only I'm removing this thing. Huh? Is it audible, you guys? This person, yeah. yeah. This person, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. We already, yes, sir. already did this thing. That's why I'm not repeating. But uh, when you are doing this style sheet configuration, you must be concentrated on the things. Okay. Some space and all that. If it is missed out, then later on the configuration. It's a bit difficult okay so already i have a three properties i did on a revision third one it's a material description correct done now i'm going to apply it and we'll see the results Done. Now let's see the results. Yeah, weight, material code, and material description. It gets added. Correct. Fine. Clear. All. This yeah. way you yeah. need to modify it. Okay. So uh, what I did actually, existing style sheet I'll keep there as it is. And we'll create a new style sheet directly for a new custom business object. Okay. Correct. And I'll keep it here only under the new stuff folder. Fine. So this way uh, you can try this workshop 5. Okay. So it's very simple one. But uh, you guys, if you are concentrating on what activity you are performing, then it will be successfully completed. Or else it's very complicated to fix the issue if you have any concern with the style sheets and all that okay so understand the things same activity i did but with the full focus only okay cursor mouse and all that you need to understand it or else i'll tell you the simple way okay instead but that is a lengthy process only you can download it these style sheets okay after that in local okay you modify it in local and then import it as per the data set input okay so that is the thing only so try this workshop 5 from your end style sheet modification okay and save all these things now yeah okay so same thing is there we also got this workshop part and all that material code and material description we are getting or not i'll try to create a new one again okay next yeah material code material description okay wait and all that we'll get okay fine as per the workshop we got all these things correct now next thing so this is for this workshop basically is for uh, configuration okay configure the custom properties on the user interface let's check okay now create a list of values workshop 6 Create a list of values. Okay, so first I'll explain you all these things and then we can directly start. Okay, so perform the list of values and attach a list of values to the particular properties by using extensions. Okay, so here we created the created a FI safety code, one list of value, classic LOV. 
and they added okay safety code okay safety code they given the values description after creation of the safety code they attached this lov to the safety code property okay so this activity they perform later on next time they created a cascading list of values okay for that first they created a5 west coast supplier list of value okay inside that they added a values two values then they created one more east coast suppliers list they added values then they created a a5 supplier one value east and west and they attached a cascading cascading lovs for east they attached a5 is coast supplier and for west they attached a5 west coast coast suppliers okay and after that they deployed it and see the they check the results all this one okay so this we will finish it up not an issue fine and after that we'll move ahead with the workshop seven okay it's so very important again now i'll minimize this one to the point workshop okay so first how to create a classic LV that you guys already know okay so in extension you will have a option list of value LV here inside that you need to select the classic LV right click on this one add new classic LV Correct. Here you need to define the which LOV you want to create. I want to create a F5 supplier code. Okay. So I'll copy from here and I'll paste it here directly. So as per the document, they given the values for this one. 1, 2, 1, 2, 35, 40. Okay. Meet safety standards for first. Add value first one one for mid safety standards finish oh sorry Two for uh, does not meet safety standards. Thirty five. Forty. That is the standard values only, guys. Okay. Apply. Okay. It's done only. I am keeping existing only as per this workshop. Okay. Now we'll save this one. Finish. It gets created. Okay. So again. The safety code we are going to attach this to the property so we already have a prop custom business object workshop part the safety code property we already added okay for this property, I am attaching a LOV. LOV attaches, LOV browse, custom. It 
it's not loading. So, so. yes, we have to save this first. Okay. Okay. This case, you have option actually here. One reload the data model. Okay, I'm going to reload it. This uh, reloading data model is needed to Supplier code attach LOV add A5. Hmm. One second. Plan finish. Correct. The issue is uh, because of integer uh, we have selected that is the issue. Yes, correct, correct. correct. Instead of that, uh, yes, we could have selected string, it would have accepted more numbers and getters. Numbers and getters no? Yes, yes, yes. If we select that particular property, if we selected a string, then it will be acceptable. Okay. Okay. Now, for a safety code, I am going to attach that element. This time, you will get this underscore element. Correct. I'm going to finish it up. Okay. Save this uh, configuration. Done. Now, again, this is done. Okay. For code. Again, after deployment, we'll get a result for this one. Okay. Now, cascading. They give one. Okay. So, for cascading, we have a east and west. 
value is 10 waste okay so we'll create a fi supplier first new lv supplier is 10 waste string lv is only this time first value East and second one is the waste. finish for supplier it's a string long string only so it is acceptable okay so we are attaching this supplier to the supplier but for this again we need to add some cascadings okay view correct so first i'm creating a fi east code waste supplier code okay this one i am creating value and value display name supplier one supplier one fine supplier two fine cancel it finish it okay creating a new for east coast supplier east coast supplier supplier 3 supplier 4 supplier 3 supplier 4 Correct. Cancel it. Finish it. Okay. Now, the suppliers, I'm attaching this cascading. to. Okay. I'm going to open this supplier. Now, if I select show cascading view, if I select east, add sub below. For east, I'm going to attach east only. Okay. For west, finish. For waste, I am going to attach a server to be waste supplier course. Okay. Fine. Finish. Done. Now I am going to save this one. But we had not attached this supplier to the particular supplier property. I am selecting the supplier. Elevate attaches. Add. And supplier. Done finish done save save this is what they given here after that after deployment you will get this type of result okay for a safety code you will get this type of things and for supplier you will get this type of things okay so now we'll do one thing i'm going to save it so before going to start this rules okay before going to start this add naming rule we'll try one hot deployment now is it fine for you guys yes yes, yes. yeah hot deployment will not take uh, more time actually it's a 10 15 minutes only then for every rules, we'll try to deploy it and test the things. Okay, because currently we are in flow with the LOVs only. So immediate if we see the results, then you can easily get all these things. Okay. Now I'm going to save this one. I'm going to close this team center now. Okay.
okay so for deployment okay so i'm going to close all these things no need to generate a package and all that for our deployment you can directly deploy but better to take a backup, backup before starting sorry uh, is it better to uh, take, take a backup before starting correct 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 backup is required actually okay but uh, yeah for this actually testing and order i'm not taking but from your end you need to take a backup okay correct so deploy template you can directly deploy from here okay so here we already configured a profile server profile so it's asking for a password user id and password let's see whether it is connecting or not so in hot deployment we are skipping these steps generate client cache and generate server cache actually so performance will be slow after hot deployment not an issue we are no more using this particular machine later on so but for understanding purpose you must need to know all these things but for testing purpose hot deployment is okay only because why we wait for one hour more than one hour it will take for deployment depends on the speed of your computer okay so it gets connected i think okay so this time yeah finish if i click on this finish okay then it will start directly deployment okay so it will take a 15 minutes guys i'll keep this screen as it is okay so once done we'll again continue with these things okay you okay so hot deployment is done so you will get a view logs file okay if you click ok that is final so it's successfully done actually or you can check the log file in case something goes wrong and in console window you will get a results for this one okay so whatever the last activity you performed that is the thing only they explained here in the workshop correct at first time if you see hot deployment actually that part i skipped first time can okay, i come back here okay after deployment in console tab you'll get the results latest results and all that okay after that you need to clean the port okay how to clean the portal that i'm going to tell you now let's say i'm going to minimize this one and we'll start the team center okay before going to start the team center you must need to clean this portal dot bat file okay how to clean this it's not mandatory actually open the command from portal and give a command open clean only so it will clean all these things correct and it will start so after hot deployment your rich kind client performance will slow why because in backend the cache will not be generated at the time of a hot deployment so the people on a client location they are avoiding this hot deployment actually they are going through the cold deployment only okay The client cache is empty the rich client is logged the skip client cache mode if you wish to improve rich client flows see your administrator about generating the client cache later on also you can generate it but this time we'll skip okay because no more client is connected to this environment okay that is the thing only we are the only working on the same okay so this time we are going to check the results of yellow is correct
file new item workshop part septic code it's not why it's not reflecting ओके हेलो यस या यस या सो वी एडेड अ सेफ्टी कोड्स 1 2 35 40 एंड वी हैव अ सप्लायर ईस्ट वेस्ट ईस्ट सप्लायर 3 सप्लायर 4 वेस्ट सप्लायर 1 सप्लायर 2 फाइन क्रिएट इट लेट्स चेक Create it. Fine. Lateron, if you want to modify, check out it. I'll check. See, here is also it. It is available in this way. Correct. Done. So you can create multiple of uh, yellow bees with by using these methods. Okay. Now moving ahead. Workshop number seven correct till it, it is clear all of you guys we are not skipping anything eh? yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. So we are here only six i think we completed six create the list of values now workshop number seven is okay workshop number seven is for add a naming rule correct so object we already created we are providing a naming rule pattern for this one okay so what they given here they given a naming rule pattern okay part a a okay so in double inverted it's a fixed value only in double inverted whatever it is there that is fixed only and we are generating a counter for this one correct now let's create okay we are adding one naming rule for this one okay so i have a bmid so i'm creating one rule naming rule okay where will uh, rules option will have a sorry in rules we have a naming rule Okay, here I am creating a new naming rule. Add a new naming rule. Okay, with the name
a5 workshop part naming rule correct and for that i am defining a counter here and is there the pattern we are defining it here okay so the pattern is like that only so i'm copying it what is the meaning of this whatever it is there in a double inverted okay that is fixed one only part hyphen okay part hyphen it's a in double inverted okay after that a a is varies okay then we have a pattern hyphen is in again double inverted n n n it's a counter only correct so generating a counter option i'm going to click it generate counter so initially what is the value so initially i have a pattern we are going to start with this number first object gets created with this one and last object is automatically get created with this one correct okay steps one step every time it's a uh, creating with the step one only i'm going to finish it up now only we created this naming rule now we are attaching this naming rule okay so where we are going to attach to workshop part we have a item underscore id is there one object property is there okay item underscore id if i select this one and attach naming rule naming rule attaches here i am adding this particular rule correct once done finish it i'm going to save this one correct fine done naming rule we are attaching in a this way only so this is what they mentioned here later on once deployed you'll get this type of results once your data model is get deployed then you can see you will get this type of results okay so now workshop number 8 okay i'll complete this workshop number 8 also okay naming rule any okay so basically uh, currently there is no restriction for this workshop form okay once you created once you deployed you can attach a multiple forms to the revision okay but the requirement is that you can attach only one manufacturing uh, workshop manufacturing for the one revision so for that we are creating one relationship rule we call it as the grm relation okay so here they given the whole the process to create it so in this case we have a primary object it's a workshop part revision okay because we are attaching to the workshop part revision okay what is the secondary object secondary object we have a workshop manufacturing form just now we created that that is the secondary object only okay now which relation you are using to attach that form to the revision that is the ims specification okay so this is the relations and condition is a true only so primary cardinality secondary cardinality we need to set it okay now here i am going to open workshop part sorry a5 workshop part okay sorry we required a uh, workshop part revision actually okay so here i am selecting a workshop part revision i'm going to close this one here we have a grm rule is there now what is the primary object we have a workshop part revision that is already set what is your secondary object yes workshop manufacturing form that is our secondary object correct what is the relation you want to paste what is the relation you want to use to paste that particular object that is the ims specification here they clearly mention all these things ims specification okay i am selecting ims specification relation And condition it's true only 
for all okay now you'll get uh, this type of results at that now here you need to set the con con you need to add the cardinality for this one okay if you add on this one okay then what is your secondary object you need to set a workshop manufacturing form relation object ima specification five wire selecting ima specification we are pasting this object to the in item revision with this relation only so i am selecting this condition true cardinality here i am going to set to one primary cardinality one secondary cardinality also i am selecting one and i'll keep this as it is okay i'm going to finish it okay so you'll get this type of structure correct once it is done then you will get this type of GRM rule conditions okay now we'll do one thing i'm going to save it and we'll check i think they added one okay 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 add deep copy okay display rule deep copy rule and compound property will uh, see in the next deployment okay fine now again i'm going to start the deployment okay let's see okay i'm going to start this deployment here pm id deploy template Okay, 10 minutes is more is enough to deploy the existing data model guys not an issue Okay. Connect. okay once i click on this finish deployment will get started okay so deployment is done i'm going to minimize this bmid let's see um, 
Oke. Okay. Okay, what we configured? form we created uh, oh sorry we created naming rule okay after that we created one form then we added a some relation to the form okay three things we configured now Okay, first we'll check. So ID you can assign or else it will automatically create it. Okay, so name I am providing a temporary. Again, I am going to finish it up. Okay, let's see which ID it gets created. Okay, I am going to close this one. Part AA000. Next time it will create it part AA0001. Okay, now we create the one form item form workshop manufacturing form correct um, oh, we selected item so that's why form it's not we need to select a form only
wait still it's loading only Let's see workshop manufacturing form next file new form oh okay workshop manufacturing form we added two properties also on this one huh? okay let uh, mfg form i'm going to finish it up what happened we created that form now okay this form and yeah you can create under the item revision also same thing file new form workshop manufacturing form next form finish it gets attached with the im specification tool okay you can see it here okay now if you try to create another then it will not get created it will create but it will not allow you to paste i think see no additional object type workshop man can be attached to the relation specification okay because we attached a grm rule correct clear all all of you guys even you cannot paste also clear all of you yeah 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 yes okay so now moving ahead with the deep copy rule okay so deep copy rule we are using for a revise and save as operation okay so what they given here for a deep copy we first understand the things here okay deep copy rule they created a deep copy rule for a workshop part revision for a object workshop manufacturing form so for workshop manufacturing form they selected a copy as a object okay so we have a three options copy as a object copy as a reference and no copy okay so now here for all these three they created uh, all these three they created all these three means uh, for workshop manufacturing part they created a copy as object for excel they created a no copy for word they created a copy as a reference okay so instead of this excel we'll use a pdf and instead of this word we use a notepad okay and let's create okay because we don't have that tool right now so here we have a item revision workshop part revision here we have a deep copy rule here i am select i am adding one more deep copy rule for a revise operation a revise operation with a relation which relation i mean specification relation correct i man specification MN specification so attached to the business object it's a workshop manufacturing part sorry a5 workshop manufacturing form so for that i'm selecting a copy as a object okay copy as a object i'm going to apply it correct next i'm again i'm creating one more for a revise operation it gets created For a revise operation with the relation IMS specification or object PDF, it's true. No copy. Finish. 
I'll create one more for a relation for operation type revise I mean specification here I'm selecting a text T E X T and I'll use copy as a reference only correct finish now we'll get the same structure here also but instead of this actually we use a pdf and text okay instead of these other tools okay now i'm going to save this once deployed we'll get the result okay so that is what we added deep copy rule and after that i think there is a display rule they mentioned or not i don't know yeah display rule is there okay adding a display rule okay what they mentioned here in the display rule display to hide the objects only add a business object display rule it's a simple one only guys okay but currently we have only one user i think okay in team center we have only one user in pdba only one user is it's a fresh environment only so it's a simple one only you can hide a business object for a particular user okay you can create it these things in your machine it's a simple world display rule and add this display rule for the particular roles okay so i'll do one thing i'll add display display rule for a two objects one company and all that or uh, infodb user okay okay we have a company business object is there okay so company business object i'm going to open display rule option is there here i'm selecting a accessor name okay accessor name here i'm selecting DBA okay I said group directly so the member who is in DBA group it will not be accessible okay workshop uh, company currently you can create it for example file new item company you can search it also and you can create it also okay I, I hide that object only so this display rule okay i'm going to save it now at the end this is the display rule okay so for each and every object object you need to do at the same repeated activity guys Correct. Deploy will do at the end only. Now, now at the end we have remaining the compound property. Add a compound property. Fine. So what they did here? Okay, we already have a workshop part. On that we have a AFI safety code property is there and supplier code fi supplier property is already there okay now they created two properties a5 material code and a5 material description okay Trail code one second. Okay, we already created guys. Huh? We already created Okay, so 
a phi supplier compound property we are compounding that supplier property here okay so we have a part revision i am adding one property compound property next call it as a a5 Okay. Supplier compound okay but display name i'll keep as it is only a yeah? supplier only for both okay but i'm adding this supplier compound property here also did did the same thing okay display name supplier id of the part supplier of the part okay now you need to add the segments for this one okay for a traverse path so here you need to add a first segment with the relation item item tag then next here you need to add the object finish and final segment you need to add a we have a property call it as a a5 supplier correct a5 If I supplier why it is not visible okay if I supplier is there then I'm going to finish it up once I save this one what are the value you filled supplier value that will get reflected on the revision directly done now i'm going to deploy this change deploy this configuration and we'll see the results okay so let's check the results So what we configured display rule compound property and deep copy rule then
Okay, so basically we are working here in a DBA group right now. I'll try to create a company business object now. One second, it's loading only. Item and in item I'm selecting a company, but company will not be visible because I applied the display rule on the company object, correct? okay company it's not available now because we applied a deep copy a display rule for this company correct so you can hide in this way actually display now we have a workshop part so currently we have a form which is already there now i'm attaching one more data set with the pdf Okay, so here I'm selecting PDF. Okay. Now I'm adding a text one more. Correct. Let's see. Now I'm going to revise it. File and revise. next so here it automatically applied these things okay so for this particular text it applied copy as a reference apply no copy for pdf form copy as object and finish so for pdf no copy next revision it will not come correct done okay so we added one more property that is uh, if i compound property on the revision we need to add that property okay in a style sheet then only it gets reflected i'm just copying this one here in team center we have a if i workshop part revision summary is there in viewer tab then apply now let's see let's try to create one workshop part new come Compound property. Providing a name only, just for understanding. Supplier code I am selecting a supplier I am selecting a supplier to. Okay. And I'm going to finish it up. So supplier to value will get displayed on the item revision also. Let's see. See, so here on item it's a supplier. It's supplier, supplier to 
my item revision also it's a supplier supplier correct we compounded that value directly getting done so it's all about a bmid workshop okay so you guys explore all these things okay later on come up with some issues and all that okay i'll definitely help you out okay okay guys if you have any doubt you can ask me